Recently, I've been casually asked. So, what's the difference between a definitive and an intermediate host? The answer was obvious. Look, a flying elephant. Huh? But what indeed is the difference? A parasite, temporarily or permanently, resides in or on another organism in order to feed or multiply. This organism is called the host. Adding defining adjectives to it is only useful if, with regard to the parasite, there is more than one kind of host. A flea, for example, has only one kind of host. So does the haunted house. The heartworm has two. You could call them first and second, but who's fond of cold numbers, apart from mathematicians? The definitive host is the organism in which the parasite reaches the final stage of its development, turning into an adult. By a forced comparison, if we regard a person as a parasite, then the definitive host could be, say, this famous school or this infamous joint. If you feel something's missing, you're right. It doesn't always make sense to speak of developed and undeveloped forms. The single-celled toxoplasma, for example, multiplies, grows up and perishes by the million in both the definitive and the intermediate hosts. The definition, therefore, should be modified. The definitive host is the organism in which the parasite reaches its final, sexually mature form or in which it mates. Again, in a comparison, if a person is a parasite, the definitive host is the bedroom or the toilet of this famous school or the alley next to this infamous joint between the dumpster and the fire escape ladder. Or the ladder itself. There's no limit to ingenuity. You may wonder how the single-celled manage to mate with nothing in between their legs. I mean, they don't even have legs. Well, has that ever been a hurdle that the really determined couldn't clear? They are capable of exchanging or mixing genetic material, which is quiet enough for the scientists to call a sex. So, next time, while sipping a cocktail, a determined parasitologist would like to mix some genetic material with you, make no mistake about his intentions. Let's then refine our definition a bit. The definitive host is the organism in which the parasite reaches its final sexually mature form or in which it reproduces sexually. The definition of the intermediate host can be deduced straight from that of the definitive host. It is the organism in which only sexually immature forms of the parasite develop. In a human comparison, it may be the kindergarten. But with kids these days, it's safer to say preschool. Of course, the single-celled mess it up again. How could you call a fully grown toxoplasma sexually immature? It can even produce offspring by division. But that isn't sex. It would be most difficult to draw a human comparison. Relatively few clone themselves only to avoid sex. So, to properly put it, the intermediate host is the organism in which only sexually immature forms of the parasite develop or in which it only reproduces in an asexual manner. To sum up, the intermediate host shelters pimply parasites with pubescent armpits and a breaking voice. They often stink of sweat and watching porn in secret is the full extent of their sexual experience. The definitive host, however, houses shrewd, stylish, stockbroking parasites who make sweet love to their partners in their Manhattan apartments day by day. Wish you good health and few parasites. My thanks to Dr. Eva Fock for her technical supervision. There wasn't much to supervise this time. <laughs>